After a summer full of research and preparing for our independent study, there were a few months where we just kind of lived our senior year, and then basketball season hit, and we were thrown full swing into filming mode. better way to start off um, basketball season than 5 a.m. tryouts on Halloween. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, literally. <laughs> uh, I think we all kind of felt that way. We were very tired and then obviously Bell and I were eager to get started on this project. We did all this thinking about it but no action so we really just got thrown in the deep end. We were like, oh, we're here now. And then um, I think we kind of took for granted the fact that I was in manager mode. I had responsibilities as a manager and I was very excited about it. It was very cool, but it was also definitely a struggle to kind of navigate those priorities of do I need to be the documentarian here? Do I need to be, you know, videoing or do I need to like be a team player here and take care of the team and contribute to the team in that way? Um, and that was a really hard decision for me, but that's why we have Bella. I remember sometimes I would be filming one thing and then uh, Isabel would come over to me and say, hey, you need to pay attention over to this side of the gym because something cool is happening over here. And I'm like, ah, okay, I'm sorry. And because keep in mind, I was one person, one girl having no idea what she's doing with her iPhone, trying to capture an entire gym of action and things that are happening. At this moment in time, I didn't know what to capture. I didn't know like what angles I should get, like when I should start filming. I remember watching lots of informational videos about like what makes a really good, you know, documentary. You have large establishing shots and then you get like kind of like a medium shot and then a close up of the action. And in the first month of the documentary, I had no idea that's how you capture I was things. Like, we just watch the game and like the whole point of the documentary is to show what Fans don't get to see. Fans can go put a tablet out and go record. You see parents do that all the time. Mm -hmm. We were kind of doing that in the beginning. I'm like, that's not what people want to see. They want to feel like they're there. Mm -hmm. And so to feel like you're there, I mean, you have to get those tight shots. And so once we figured that out, it was it was game on, pun intended. Um, but it was a good, like, rough first month of the filming process. Most of the footage was unusable. And if you watch back the documentary now, it might sound like we're being harsh on it, but the documentary truly does progress. You can see our what we've learned as videographers from beginning to end. Watch the first scene of that documentary, watch the last scene, it's night and day difference. So along with practices, I would also film games. As Isabel was doing her manager duties, it was my job to go around and capture you know, every aspect of the game I could. So at this point in time, I had done a lot more research and I knew kind of um, the strategies to filming a game and what I should capture. And so I developed a system. Okay. So when I would get on location, I would start by going outside the facilities and I would capture large establishing shots of the building and, you know, some close ups of some, you know, like random things I thought looked interesting. <laughs> After I got those outside shots, I would go into the building and I'd start shooting pre-game stuff, like girls, like in the locker room, like what they're saying to each other, or what the coaches are saying, like before a game. We really um, wanted to show, like with the locker room specifically, those bonding things that happen, and a big thing like before every game that you kind of got a hint of like our routine, you know. Coach Elig would always open up our locker room discussions with um, a pattern. There was always that moment of reflection, prayer, how can we tie this to God's plan for us and also tie that into basketball. How does that translate between our faith into the game? And so um, that was huge for our documentary. After the first and second parts of my system were finished, I would move on to game time. And when game came around, I would want to capture the game, obviously, what the, how the girls were playing, but then I'd also capture the bench and the crowd reactions and even the girls' reactions after a play that they did. And so I was running around with this Canon camera just trying to capture every aspect of the game to try to get like the biggest, most accurate picture as possible. And at times, you know, it was overwhelming. 
because if I was trying to get a reaction from the crowd, that would mean that I would miss the play that had sparked that reaction, which could have been important for the documentary we were making. And so it was a lot of juggling when I should film and where I should film at the same time. It was stressful, but a lot of situational awareness came through that. Um, by the end of the season, I figured out that, hey, when it's about time to have a timeout, I, I, need, I need to be at the end of the court ready to run up and film a huddle. And so, you know, that's something that I just grew into as the season progressed. I do remember vividly telling Bella at one point, this isn't a highlight reel, we're making a documentary, and so you do need to show those missed shots. You need to capture us being bad sometimes and losing games by a lot. Like, that's part of the season, that's part of the journey, that's part of the, the growth and learning process. And so we wanted to show that, and specifically we wanted to show, you know, those huddles. What is being said in there? What, what motivated that player to do that really cool thing that they did? So after all the practices and games, I would go back home and sort through all the footage that I had taken from that night, which would take me two to four hours, maybe sometimes a little bit more, and I would, I would write notes. So I would know and I'd be able to go back and check, okay, uh, this instance happened in like this two minute, 30 second video, or okay, um, this player said this specific thing in this 30 second video. And so that way I was able to kind of like catalog and organize my content. That to me like was very helpful. That kind of helped me stay on track and up to date with what she was recording while I was managing. I was responsible for just scheduling interviews and figuring out when do we need interviews, why do we need interviews. You don't have a story, you don't have the documentary, at least the one that we were trying to tell without interviews. You need somebody to narrate it and we knew we wanted that to be at least the girls, coaches possibly. I kept everything in a log, a little spreadsheet, so that was the start of a spreadsheet with Isabel. <laughs> yeah. I get it from my dad. Through all that, I mean, it got overwhelming. Obviously, Bell and I were full-time students and so, um, you know, you had to navigate not only your schedules, but also navigate their schedules and not only each other's schedules, but also the, the space, the facility schedules. Like, is there going to be a game at that time, you know, depending on the location? Um, sometimes we would shoot, you know, in the locker room, and so you want to make sure that the gym is quiet at that time. Um, or we would shoot, like, in the DJ room, but sometimes in that classroom, you know, there's class going on, so we couldn't record then. So a lot of a lot of navigating schedules and all that. And so sometimes it did come with sacrificing class time. Bella created a rough draft of interview questions for me that I would then look over, um, edit, add my own questions to, and then later facilitate those interviews. So when I would write the rough draft for interview questions, I was going off of all of the footage I had sorted through. And so I kind of had a rough idea of the questions we should be asking to propel the story forward. But then after Isabel would scan through my interview questions, she knew the girls on a personal level. So she was able to add her own and create a more personal touch to the interviews. One thing that I think my strength through that, that process was because I knew the girls really well, um, I was able to get them to be more comfortable. Um, it felt more like talking to a friend rather than talking to an interviewer. Um, and I think that was kind of one of our creative edges as far as, or just strengths um, that we didn't anticipate happening was, you know, what adults can go film a high school documentary right now that intimately. It's kind of weird, <laughs> but we were high school students. We were peers, we were part of the team. And because these girls are my friends, I know like, kind of knew them well enough to know how to get them to be a little bit more comfortable, get them to be more genuine, more authentic in those conversations. And so that was the most fun I had, honestly, throughout that production stage was just talking to them and getting them to share their stories and share those things that I knew made them so special and excited to be there and where they were in that journey and just getting them to be vulnerable enough to open up about that. I mean, that's what made our team our team. That made us a family, you know, those, those experiences and those dynamics that I wanted to show them. I don't think you all realize how unprofessional or thrown together you could say our interviews were. It was a pretty interesting setup. I mean, we would set our phone up on textbooks, like yeah. eight textbooks. We, we had going down the hallways with like wooden stools. We like, had to borrow stools from you know. teachers and say, hey, can we, we'll, we'll bring it right back, we swear. I remember going to like poor Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Kenderman in the office. I would always borrow her like scotch tape to tape up like 
um, signs so people knew not to enter and not that they would read them anyway but <laughs> yeah. knew not to enter, in, enter the room because there's an interview going on because you, you know you don't want people walking in, in the middle of your interview like they don't they didn't sign up to be on camera one but you know that's going to interrupt what the person's saying if it's valuable especially it's not easy to you know not one not know as much as we did we didn't know what we were doing we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because we wanted to be represent this team in an accurate way and not only just make a video, uh, but make it good. We want it to be good. Uh, we want people to be entertained yeah. by it. And we wanted people to enjoy it even if you weren't a part of the team, even if you weren't familiar with who we were or what we're doing. We wanted it to be entertaining for not just basketball fans. And so we had a mission, we had a message that we wanted to tell. And so that was pressure. Um, and we put that on ourselves and I, I wouldn't change it any other way. I think that really motivated us to do a good job.